Well, we're excited about this. It's good to catch up with Patrick Ewing. We know him in Central Florida, one of the 50 greatest. What are the odds we'd all get together like this, Patrick? <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> I know. This, <laughs> this is, this is uh, some crazy times that we're living in right now. Straight out of a movie, one of those horror movies that we've, yes. always, we've always seen. But it's good to see you guys, see, that we have the, the old group back together. <laughs> That's right. Uh, except yeah. my, except I, I, my wife today said, like, why the beer? Like, why do like, you're not, <laughs> <laughs> this is like your, your razor works and the sink works. Why do I, why do I have the beard? I, I, I'm hunkering down. Well, you know, my son, he tells me, dad, you know, you're trying to get the high top back. I said, son, I could, I would, but it's, it's real light. It's real light up there. <laughs> Mine's coming in white. I got a lot of white coming in there, so that's all right. Yeah, I think we all have a lot oh, of white. Yeah. Where, where are you at, Pat? Where are you, uh, where are you hunkering down at? I'm hunkering down in D.C., in the, in the DMV, as we call it, uh, at home, uh, just trying to still get some work done, watching film, uh, making calls to, to uh, you know, uh, prospective players, uh, just doing the best we can to try to stay engaged and make sure that we keep these kids engaged. So how does that go now, though, Patrick, that you can't – I mean, you can't physically go see these guys. You can't – I mean, are you, doing, are you doing a lot of this? Are you doing a lot right, of – Right, right. We time? Skype them. You know, we, yeah. we FaceTime. Uh, we, we, we call on the phone. We do everything. We Zoom. We do everything. Everything that, we, that legally we can do, we're trying to do. I know you didn't set up the Zoom, by the way. Somebody else set up. <laughs> well, you know, I, I call my son. He's my IT guy. That's my <laughs> oldest son, Patrick. Right. So anything I need to get done with my phone or computer, he's the one I need to I call. He gets it all. Perfect. You know what I don't you know what I don't understand? <laughs> and you might be you know what I don't understand, Patrick. I don't understand why it would take more than one call from you for someone to not go to Georgetown. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I don't understand. You get the call from Patrick, you go. That's where you hey, go. Look, I, I try. I, I'm out there beating the bushes. You know, it's funny. I keep telling folks, uh, I do a lot of interviews, and one of the things I always talk about is people always come up when I'm interviewing, I'm going to, into the, these homes. They're saying, well, you know, we're, we're one of, the, one of the, your, your hugest fans. We just love We love you with the Knicks. We love you um, at Georgetown. But then their kids will never, never come. So every time I, you know, I, I keep telling these folks that, look, don't tell me that you're, you're my your biggest fan because none of you guys ever come. So tell me you hate me. Tell me something. But, you know, uh, we have to be able to uh, get uh, these good players to, to start thinking of us in that way. Patrick, is there a difference between now when you go and, and, and visit these guys, are the parents more awestruck by you than the kids are? Do, do the kids have a little yeah. bit of disconnect at this point? I'm not going to say disconnect. They know who I am. They know right. what I've done. But their parents and their grandparents, they've seen me play. So, you know, I, I, that's the biggest difference. Uh, the kids, they're used to see They see me in Space Jams or they see me in the, in the video game. But they really haven't, you know, seen me playing unless it's one of those old games on NBA TV. What was your recruiting trip that. like? You, I, from what I understand, you went to about five or six schools. But what, what did John Thompson tell you? How did he sell you on Georgetown? Um, you know, I did. I did. Uh, there was back then you could visit six schools, so I visited visited six schools. Uh, I chose Georgetown because one, John Thompson, he played the position. Um, he looked like me. He was educated. He spoke well. Uh, I thought that any of those schools that I went to, I would have gotten a great education and I would, still would have been made, able to make it to the, to, the, to the next level. But it was him, you know, just the way that he carried himself, just the way that he spoke. Uh, D.C. was close to, to Boston, which where I grew up. I, you know, my family could get, get up here and see me play. But, you know, I think the, the, the main reason I came here was because of Coach Thompson. He played the position. He, uh, he, made, he had made it to the next level. And I just love the way that he spoke. Now, I argue with these guys all the time that the Big East back in the day when, you know, it was you and Chris Mullen and Pearl Washington. And there, there's not a better basketball conference for a four-year, five-year period than those, than those 80s Big East teams, Pat. Oh, definitely. Uh, at that time, the Big East was uh, the cream of the crop. And it's, still, it's, got, it's getting back there. I think that. You know, uh, back then we were the cream, we were the, the golden standard. 
but I think right now uh, the league is 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 at a, is is at an all time high. You have uh, ten teams with uh, UConn getting ready to, to join us next year. I think that all school all ten all ten eleven teams uh, are, are 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 very good. They were competitive. Uh, we beat the heck out of each other like the old days, except for in this era we can't fight like we did back then. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I think about your championship run, right? I mean, now, now when a team wins a, an NCAA championship now, obviously you got to beat some good players, but a lot of these guys are there for one or two years. You had to run through Sam Bowie and Mel Turpin to get to the championship, and then you had to beat Akeem Olajuwon. <laughs> think about, right. think right. about that championship run and the guys that you played against uh, on that run, right? I mean, that, that oh, yeah, incredible. Oh, it was incredible. You know, I played against two of the, the, the uh, one of the pre- uh, three of the premier big guys in college sports at that time, you know, you had, you know, like you just said, Sam, Sam Bowie, Melvin Turpin, uh, the Twin Tower, and then I go against Akeem, my nemesis. I kicked his butt in in uh, in college, and he kicked my butt when I went with the Knicks. So, you know, it's ironic. Um, but no, there was though it was a great it was a great year. We got we had gotten to the the final game my freshman year. Unfortunately, we lost to that guy. You know. Uh, People always talk about Michael Jordan, and he, he had a he had a pretty good game. But Worthy is the one that had the great game. We had nothing for him. Uh, if we could have slowed James Worthy down some, we would have we would have won our first one in eighty in eighty two, and then hopefully followed back up with in eighty five. I mean yeah, eighty four. Plus, you, plus you, passed him, you, you passed him the ball at the end of the game too, Pat. You can't do that. He, he was wearing the different. <laughs> you can't just Something pass happens. him the ball. You know that things like that happens uh, through the course of a game. Uh, you know, a, a, a lot of times, but it was it was it just happened at the wrong time. At the end of the game, uh, Freddie made a mistake and, and passed the ball to James and sealed sealed the win for them. But you know, you take your hat off to them. Uh, Dean Smith was a great coach. They robbed me with all those goaltending calls that they were calling <laughs> to, to start the game. But uh, it it was a great game. Speaking How of, are you still bitter? There's Rob, like, George, did you watch? Did you watch Patrick against Duke this year on national TV? I think I, I think we were all as, <laughs> together, Patrick. I, I was as angry as anybody watching. Oh that. yes, you know it's funny. Uh, you're playing against the, the great Mike Shashevsky, who I had the opportunity to get to know back in with the Dream Team. That was the first time we we spent significant time together. And he doesn't need any help to, to win the game. No. He, he doesn't need any help. Uh, and, you know, I thought that my team was going against uh, eight guys. Um, and that kind of, you know, the one, the, one, the one call that they made was the straw that, that, broke, that broke the back. And I, I lost my cool. Uh, Coach Akbar Wahid and Coach Lewis Orr, they, they, were, they were trying to calm me down. Yeah. Um, and my, my daughter called me after the after the game. She's like, Dad, why why were you so mad at those uh, uh, at your coaches? I said, I wasn't mad at them. I was mad at the, the way that I was being officiated. Yeah. Right. But uh, you know, sometimes you have to lose your, your lose your cool. Uh, but I thought that my guys uh, played hard. My yep. coaches they did an outstanding job of, of of railing me back in, reeling me back in. Uh, and you know it, it was unfortunate that because Duke was they're a very good team they're they're a great coach and I, you know I thought that it, it sh we we had an opportunity to come away with a with a win that day but you know it was it is what it is. But George, it was good to see that '80s '90s fire out of Patrick, right? We saw. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, I, Patrick knows too because we've talked about this. Like I'm a St. John's fan. I grew up as a St. John's fan. And I lit, lit, act surprised, like I hated Patrick so much when I was a kid. I was like, God, this guy is just kicking our butt all the time. We can't get past this guy. And then, uh, but and then, you know, the Big East had that. It, it went down a little bit. Just that, you know, things started changing, and uh, more football teams came in to play, right. and other weird things were happening. But I, I do feel, I feel the same way, Dante. I feel like, I feel like the fire's coming back, Pat. I feel like, I, I feel it. I don't know what it is, but I, I feel. I don't know if it's just because you're there. And you're <laughs> so you tell me that you, you hate me again, then? No, no. I don't want to get back all those old like feelings. Nothing run in the tournament. <laughs> I, no, I didn't uh, call you after that. I left you alone. The, the Big East is coming back. You know, uh, we're maybe not to be not at the level that we were when we were here, myself, Chris, and those guys. But if, if we're, we're back. 
you know, uh, the league is, is the parity. Everyone, is, every team is, is good. Every team that from the top to the bottom, any, anybody can get knocked off by, by the other guys. And, you know, it's funny, you talk about you hating me. You know, uh, my first year, we're, we're playing against St. John's in the garden. And there's a fan behind me. Uh, he's heckling me one time, at one, one time, at one point in the game, he's heckling me. And then he's like, you know what, forget it. He's like, Patrick, it's hard to hate you. <laughs> you know, I hated you when you were played at Georgetown, but then you came, you came to the Knicks and I started cheering. I cheered, I cheered for you for 15 years. Now it's hard to go back to hating you. That's great. That's what my dad did. My dad went to Woburn High School and with Ron Hobby, <laughs> Ron Hobby, and then they played against Cambridge Ridge in Latin, and he left that game being a huge Patrick Ewing fan. <laughs> Here for you the whole game in high school. The yes. the game. We like, kicked game and took we kick we kicked bus and took names back then. <laughs> yes, you certainly did. That's always, <laughs> what's that's your always... what's your sales pitch now to Biggs? The game has changed so much and the center position is so different from when you played. But what what are you telling these young bigs now? And uh, and how do you prepare them for the next level? It's got it's well, first, of, first of all, yeah, you, you just you know everyone wants to be a three point uh, threat, you know. And it's funny, but it's ironic because even though I didn't shoot the three, I was I was one of those bigs that who, who yeah. had a great touch to be able to shoot. Mm -hmm. So you know, I just talked to him about yes, the game has changed, but you still have to be able to do be able to do both. You still have to be able to post up. You still have to be able to you know catch and shoot or shoot. Uh, all the things everyone wants to be a guard. Even when I was playing, you know, all the bigs wanted to be uh, to play like a guard. They want to handle the ball, shoot the three, all that stuff. But now, the way that the NBA has changed the game, and then the European uh, influence on the game, most big wants to want to be uh, three point uh, threat. So you talk to them about, you know, one developing their game, helping them to reach their potential. And uh, also, you know, I try to talk to them about education, you know, because I think Georgetown is a great, uh, great education uh, the school, uh, in terms of education. We're one of the best. You know, we're, we're fortunate that we have both. We have great education and great athletics. We have a rich tradition. And, you know, my goal as a coach here is to try to get us back to that level where we are competing for titles and uh, also our kids are, are getting a great education. Did, it, did, did stretching out past the three-point line ever cross your mind, Pat, when you were a player? I mean, no. you, you could hit it occasionally, but you were always right. in that, you know, 15 to 20-foot range or on the block. Like, did that right. ever think of, did you ever even consider going out three more feet? No, no. Yeah. Um, like I said, occasionally I would, I would shoot them. Uh, maybe if the shot clock was running down or, you know, a, a, ru a rush shot. Um, but mine was, you know, uh, like you just said, you know, 17 feet and in. I got my, I made my three, I got my three the hard way and right. one. Yes, you and sure did. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got, we've been quarantined, as you know, for quite some time. So my six and five-year-old daughters watched Space Jam for the first time uh, a couple of weeks ago. Tell us some of the good stuff about Space Jam. Being on that set with that cast of characters, Pat, that had to been, that had, you had to have a, a lifetime of memories doing that. Oh, it, it was a lot of fun, you know, being there with Michael, Charles, uh, Larry, Muggsy, Sean, uh, we had a great time. There were a lot of other NBA guys that uh, were out, came out to L.A. and uh, we had great pickup games uh, after we, we, we got done shooting. You know, the, the trash talking that, that went on, you know, while, while the film was being shot. It was a great experience. You know, I, to me, I, I won the Academy Award for my, for my role. <laughs> <I'll be laughs> the way the way the dramatic pause when you're touching that basketball at the oh end, yes yes cold. yes I, I was great i was great I, I i took a lot of acting classes to be able to pull just that what that, that that small part i took a lot of act yeah. <sighs> it, it, it came out in the hospital scene the hospital scene you guys are all getting wheeled out yeah that, that really it shined through all the acting classes Oh, that's no. Funny. It was it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. All right, Pat. So you obviously spent a lot of time with the Knicks, uh, most of your career with the Knicks, and then you came to Orlando to wrap up your career with us. Talk about that time. Talk about the the the, the time with the Magic as a player, and then you came back to us as a coach, and and right. and led us to great heights with Stan and Cliff and 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 Bob Iyer and all those guys, uh, Brendan Malone. Uh, we had a great run. So, like, talk about your time with Orlando specifically. 
Well, um, when I came back as, as when I came there as a player, that was one of the toughest times of my 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 life. And as a player, I I never had to sit the bench. I never had to think about when am I going in, am I going in, and that that happened to me there. Uh, so that year was was a tough time for me, but I made some great friends, and you you being one of those guys, uh, you know my teammates were great, Grant, T Mac, uh, Daryl Armstrong, all those guys, they were all great. Uh, and all of us, we still stay in uh, uh, stay in touch even today. Um, but then I'm coming back as as a coach, and to make it to the finals. Uh, we had a great team, a great run. Uh, Dwight was playing his best ball. Uh, Jameer Nelson, we brought in Rashad Lewis, uh, Hito Turkoglu. We had a great team, and, you know, we were able to make it to the, to the final, but unfortunately, Kobe was just too – Bohan uh, Gasol was just too much for us to, to overcome. But I love, I love Florida. I love, I love Orlando. I remember when I, first, when I first got there as a player, and the, the setup that that the DeVos have for 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 the team, I'm like, oh my goodness! Every team in, in the NBA should have one have a, uh, a setup like this. You know, you're the plane coming, you have the, your own hangar, you park in the hangar. You know, the, if there's rain and the the plane pulls into the hangar, put the nose of it pulls into the hangar. I'm like, this is the life. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right, because you guys used to fly. You know, Jeff Turner reminds us almost daily how uh, you guys had to fly. <laughs> You guys had to buy right? commercial. You had to get your own yes, suit. Yes, right? yes. But also, too, you know, uh, you would think that, you know, most uh, most of the other teams are are, are they're in a uh, you know cold climates. Yeah. So yes, if it's snowing, you your car is not your car is out in the element. You have to lug your bags to wherever you know where you park. In Orlando, you know, you pull your car up to the plane, you get out, you, you get your bag, put it in the trunk, and you go on. You, you're you gone. Out. Everywhere else, is, it's rough. I'm, some days, I, even as a coach, I'm like, man, I miss, I miss being Orlando. <laughs> uh, the, 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 you're out in the element. That's well, we miss having you. There's no doubt. That's what makes this so fun. And we love following your, your career and your success you're having. You mentioned Tracy McGrady, who joins you in the Hall of Fame, Patrick. Just – what do you remember right. about some of those games? I mean, I mean, just the the numbers that he was able to put up and the kind of player that he was. Oh, he's a great player. Uh, one of the most talented players that I ever played with or even coached. I had the opportunity to coach him, coach him when he when he came to uh, Houston. Uh, but you know, he's he's a remarkable player. But the guy, a guy his size, that could do the things that he he could do. Not only shooting the ball, but he was also a great defender when he wanted to be. He was a great facilitator, uh, and he was just a great guy. You saw him get those 13 points in 33 seconds. Does that stand out as one of the, one of the craziest ends to a ball game you've been a part of? Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, it, it, just, it just tells you or shows you how uh, gifted he was uh, as, as a player. But do, we, do we take things like that for granted now? Like, I, I remember – looking back at some of the of the box scores and the numbers and, and even your games pat is a nick like those it's hard to score 30 it's hard to score 40 I mean, the magic haven't had many guys do that in the last <laughs> and every time i look up a note i'm like the last guy to do this was tracy mcgrady tracy. Or the last guy. and and you, you yeah. take for granted how hard it was what you guys did Oh yeah, I mean, we're you're at the top of your profession, um, and guys like uh, Tracy, they are elite players. Uh, you know, he's he's making it to the Hall of Fame, which is is well deserved because he was definitely gifted. He was definitely talented. He could do a lot of different things. You know, like I said before, he could shoot the three, he could drive, he could dunk on you, can or make the make the right uh, pa pass. Um, so everything that he's that he's done, uh, or whatever, where he has in, where he's at in the record books is is well deserved. You guys are right, George. I got my career high was eighteen in high school against Canaan. That was a pretty good day. <laughs> my mine was thirteen. Is that is that good? <laughs> thirteen was my career. You high. guys are putting up big numbers. Big oh numbers. man, I was bombs away for me that night. Not to mention five boards too. Was, <laughs> gotcha. what, what, that two thousand nine finals run. When did you know you had something special? When did you know that? Did you know early that that team could go all the way to the finals or win a championship? When did you know you might be on a on in for a long run? 
Well, you know, I thought that the Voss family did an outstanding job along with Otis, uh, Otis, um, Otis, they, they, they put together a great cast of guys, a great cast of, of kids, uh, players, uh, along with uh, Stan, who was, uh, who I think is one of the best coaches that I've ever worked with, He's a great mind. And the guys, they all bought in. They all knew what, it, they all knew their roles. They all knew what they, what we had to do to get wins. Uh, Dwight was doing everything. He was blocking shots. He was posting up when he had his opportunities. He was running the floor, catching lob dunks. Richard was was the ultimate stretch for. He was uh, shoot the ball and um, you know also rebound, played great defense. Uh, you know Hilo Turkoglu. He was a great uh, not only being able to uh, get uh, get points but also facilitate. Uh, at a guy that is six ten and could do the things that he could do. Uh, you know we had one of the biggest teams in in the league. And then Jameer, uh, Mighty Mouse, uh, you know, he played extremely well for us. You know, he was also been able to also was able to get his points, make um, make the right play, play great defense. He got hurt, um, you know, and that kind of hurt us. But Ray for Evans came in and, and did a uh, Ray for Austin. I'm sorry, came in and, and did a, a great job for us to, to help us to get to the finals. I, I I thought that the moon was all everything was in the right place. Uh, we just went up, went against a team that, you know, was led by Kobe and Kobe and, and both he and Gasol, and Gasol, they just played out of their mind. Pat, what hurts more, 09 finals losing or, or the 94 finals as a player? Or, or, is, it, or is it equal? Both, <laughs> both, both. Because, you know, um, you know, if we had won, I would still have, I would have a ring. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I would true. have a ring. So it wouldn't, wouldn't have made a difference if, uh, if, if it was a, as a player or, or as a coach. Tell, tell Magic fans a little bit about Steve Clifford, the, the Steve Clifford that you know, and I, I know you get along with him great, and he tells as many Patrick Ewing stories as he can, which is fantastic for us. But uh, what, uh, what, what do you appreciate about Cliff? And then, and oh, then... I, I hate the guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a pain. <laughs> No, uh, Cliff and I, we're, 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 we're brothers from another mother. That's what I, I keep calling him. Um, he's a great guy. He's a great coach. He's a, a great friend. He's one of the hardest workers that uh, I've ever been around. You know, I've been blessed to, to be around people that, that uh, believe in themselves and work at their, at their craft. And he's one of them. And, you know, we, starting with our, the first time we worked together, in Houston, uh, you know, he and I have been, been working together for a lot of years. And I, I, I think that you guys got a steal when y'all was able to, yeah. to get him because he, he is very knowledgeable and he wor- he's going to work his butt off to try to get the magic back to where they need to be. We've seen that. We've certainly seen that. And he, he, doesn't, he doesn't stop working. Is that hard? Does he make guys work a little too hard on his team? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> no, no, he, he, hey, look, you, you have to be able to push these kids. Yes, you, you know, do. Every, everybody, you know, uh, every, not everybody is self-motivated. So there are times when you need to push them to get the, the, the best out of them, the most out of them. And I think he, uh, he knows, he, he knows the fine line between pushing them and then, you know, giving, giving them, uh, giving them uh, some time uh, to, to recoup. Yeah, Pat, what, really is, what, is, what is it about the Van Gundy family and system that that I mean that you guys work harder than anybody I know I mean I, I've, I've seen it on both ends now I've seen it with Cliff and and his lineage with Jeff and you and Stan and every I mean you guys are just in there all the time grinding yeah you know we all we all know that um and to me that's the way what I wait that's the way I was as a player I, I believe in you know hard work and that's what my mother and father instilled in me that if you're going to do something you know, you do it 110, give it 110 percent. And I think that, you know, you know, we're, we all think alike. We all believe in the same things. Uh, you know, Jeff was a, a guy that that came in as, um, you know, one of the, the last coaches hired when I was with the Knicks. And he worked his way up the ranks, uh, learned uh, all the things that he could learn from uh, Pat Riley. Uh, Stan did the same thing. Everybody, you know, they all they all have great work ethic and you know I think their mother both you know Jeff and Stan their mother and father is still the same thing in them and Cliff his mom and dad so you know we're all we all have a great belief in ourselves, and we have a, a great work ethic and I think that great minds think alike you know uh, we believe that hard work will pay off. 
Patrick, we got, uh, I, I guess they're moving up on ESPN. They're moving up that Michael Jordan documentary to the 19th, a, a 10 part series, which we saw the preview and it looks like you were a part of. Uh, so, <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> It looks like he was given some uh, given some secrets there. He was he was being interviewed there at the at the end of that trailer. What do you uh, what, what can you tell us about that? And and obviously playing against the great Michael Jordan. Well, first of all, he, he, this man has been talking trash ever since <laughs> the first day I met him. Is that right? Uh, the first time I met him, while I was on my visit at North Carolina, and he was all he had already committed, and he was there, and he was talking trash then. Um, and we have developed a great friendship uh, from that day and until, you know, even till now. We had some great, uh, some fierce battles, and unfortunately, he lets me know every time, every chance that he gets that I was on, I, was, I, never, I never was able to beat him uh, when it counted. So, uh, you know, the trash talk never ends, but he was a great player. He's a great friend. Uh, he's another person that with uh, a huge work ethic, and a person that was able to make the most uh, out of his talent. Um, you know, from where he started being cut off his freshman team to where he ended up, you know, I keep, that's one of the things I try to tell kids when I, when I talk to them. It's not where you start, it's where you end or where you finish. Uh, so, you know, everyone has the talent to be good, but not, not everyone has the talent to be great or the work ethic to be great. And he, he, showed, he showed that he did. Well, it's funny you said that because I, I was digging through my house, you know, cleaning because everybody's cleaning, right? You have nothing to do. You have to clean every nook and cranny of your house. And you mentioned you could either be good or you could be great. Okay. Right. So I found this. I don't know if you remember <laughs> that night. That was that a was night. A great that, night. That was a great night. And it, you're the greatest. It said, I have it in print that it says you're the greatest. So I can never argue with you. <laughs> was good or who was great like it, it's right here in print that you were the great <laughs> hey that was that was a great night uh i enjoyed that night tremendously um and, and the funny thing we were playing against the magic that night it was perfect uh, timing for me <laughs> yeah the knicks were playing the magic so uh you know guys you you and doc and the rest of the guys that i played with uh was able to uh to be there to help me celebrate and then my family and friends who i grew up with college teammates and college friends High school friends, all were, they were all were there to help me uh, celebrate and to see my number being raised to the rafters. It was a special night. And yeah, I thought that, that awesome the, Knicks, night. the Knicks did an outstanding job. What was the last time you bought a drink or a meal in New York City? When's the last time you had to pay for any of that? Hey, look, every time I go to New York, <laughs> every time I go there, you don't pay? I mean, you have to pay? People don't pick up your tab? Don't pick up your tab? No. Come on. Oh, no, no one pick up the tab. I, I got to pay. They come on, man. Well, you know, you, you, did, you did make more money than us, so come on now. Dig <laughs> deep. <laughs> come on now. Oh, Jeez. man. Well, this is, this is great. I know, I know you'd love. it's on your heart. I know you'd love to see the Knicks come back, and, um, I, and we're going to be following your <laughs> – George. <laughs> Oh, I <laughs> and I thought he was a friend. That's you, right. I, you're not on the Knicks anymore. I, <laughs> I cheer for you. Well, I, I, even though I'm not uh, with the Knicks, I still want them, want to see them uh, do well. Uh, I want them to, to come back and, and become uh, more of a more uh, of a, a presence in the NBA, uh, and especially in, in in New York. Um, and I also want Georgetown to do well. I'm here at Georgetown now, so. Our goal is to be able to compete for, for titles. So all these parents out there who are listening to this show, and y'all are telling me that y'all are one of my biggest fans, please send your, your child to come play for me. Yes. <laughs> the, ones with the, the ones with the talented kids. That's the definitely, yeah. definitely. Not just they my got, kids, they, right? I'll send my kids. They have to have talent, though. They have to have talent. I'm going to send my kids to you. They don't play basketball <laughs> at all. No basketball. Perfect. <laughs> oh, well, this is great, man. Keep up the good work. We appreciate it. It's always good chatting with you, Patrick, and try not to go too stir crazy here with all this. Uh, I'm going to try my best. And you guys, make sure that y'all don't, uh, y'all are doing everything y'all need to do to make sure your wives are, are happy. Because <laughs> yeah, no in this crazy time, they might, the divorce rate might skyrocket. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good well, point. I've done more house projects in the last two weeks in my whole life. That's a good thing. Yeah, make make go, sure she's happy. Yeah, I got to go clean the gutters right now. <laughs> All, All right, right, fellas. Thank you. you. you All right, Pat. Thanks bye so bye. much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.